Hey there. In this video, I'm going to talk about four myths of the Middle Ages that are part of my favorites. Um, uh, there's various sources I'm using, but perhaps the main inspiration for this video is, uh, is this great little book here called Curious Myths of the Middle Ages, and it's by the Reverend Sabine Barring Gould. And this particular edition is edited by Edward Hardy, uh, but I'll have, it just, I'll have a, uh, the, the, these books in the description below. Uh, I may not tell these stories exactly the way he does, but uh, because I, I'm taking it from various sources here and there, but this is the main inspiration, this is the main source, and if you like this video, I recommend this book very highly. Uh, Baring Gould was an interesting writer. Not only did he write books, but he also wrote songs. He wrote that song, Onward Christian Soldiers. He wrote that. And he also wrote a book on uh, werewolves, believe it or not, which is a classic that I read years ago, and it's very good. Okay, so uh, so the first story I'm going to tell is that of the wandering Jew. Uh, briefly, the story goes like this. Uh, Jesus is carrying his cross, and it's heavy, and he's suffering, and he's falling. And he temporarily stops in front of this uh, this, this guy that this Jewish guy that's standing there. And the guy says to him, leave here, move on. Don't, don't stop in front of me. And Jesus turns to him and says, oh, I'll leave, but you'll still be here when I come back. So because of Jesus said that, uh, this, this guy never dies. He wanders the earth, never to rest, to tell his story to everybody that would, would, would listen how he mistreated the Savior until Jesus comes back and at the end of time. So, uh, uh, so of course, this is a, <laughs> this is a very anti-Semitic story, uh, unfortunately. And that's not why I like this story. I like this story because this idea of someone who behaves uh, badly or hastily uh, and is punished by not dying uh, is actually uh, seems to resonate with later thinkers and writers. Uh, it's an interesting motif and you find it in in another story. If you didn't read this in school, it's very good. The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Uh, this particular edition is beautiful because it's it's illustrated by Gustave Doré, a very famous illustrator of his time. And uh, and this tells the story of a sailor who shoots an albatross, and he wasn't supposed to do that. And because of that, uh, his ship gets lost at sea, his fellow travelers die slowly of starvation, and then when the ship sinks uh, and he's rescued, he doesn't die. He wanders the earth to live forever to tell his story on how he shot the albatross. And, and it's, it's where we get the saying, having an albatross around your neck. So that's a very good story. And it also, uh, uh, if you like Gothic literature, like Frankenstein or Dracula, there's another uh, little gem that isn't talked about as much. It's called The Monk by, by Matthew Gregory Lewis. It's a really juicy read if you like Gothic literature. And the reason why I mention this book, uh, even though this is a, a video on, on myths and legends, I mention this book because The Wandering Jew actually has a small role in this book as well. Very interesting little role. So yeah, uh, moving on, I'm going to tell the story of Melusina. Now Melusina was a, uh, a fairy woman. Uh, she was uh, cursed to one day a week uh, half her body from the waist down would turn into a serpent. Uh, she eventually marries uh, a royal man by the name of Raymond, uh, and she makes him promise her, one day a week, I want you to leave me alone. I'm going to go to my bath, and you're to leave me alone, if that's okay with you. And he says, yeah, sure. But of course, curiosity gets the better of him, and he spies on her. And he sees that half her body is that of a serpent, and he's shocked. But he lets it go, he loves her. He's like, I'm going to make believe I don't know anything. But then what happens is that she eventually has children. And these children tend to be strong and brave, but they each have a strange deformity about them. Finally, she gives birth to one kid named Gregory. And he has a big tooth coming out of his mouth uh, that sticks out. And therefore, he's called Gregory Great Tooth. And uh, he unfortunately uh, burns down a holy place. I think it's a monastery. And uh, and Raymond is enraged and he blames her and says, our, our kid is a monster because you're a monster. And then she realizes that he, he betrayed her and he knew, he spied on her and knew that she was a, a part serpent. And with a shriek, she flies out the window because she's got wings too. And she flies out the window. And because uh, the story is important to the city of Lusignan in France, to this day, whenever a member of the royal family is going to die, she's heard shrieking and flying above the city of Lusignan. Yeah, interesting story. Um, there's a full-length version, uh, apart from the short version that Gould 
that Sabine Gould tells. There's a full-length version in a romance called Melusina that's written by Jean Daras. That's also very beautiful. Um, the, the story of Melusina is actually very interesting because it seems to be part of this whole collection of stories that are popular in the Middle Ages that have to do with a mortal man that marries a woman that is not quite mortal. She's a fairy woman, a water spirit, a pagan spirit, something like that. And and usually the, the marriage is always uh, with the condition that the man follows follows a certain rule and he goes along with it and but sadly he usually breaks the rule anyway and the marriage dissolves these stories usually have sad endings um and uh one uh, one subgroup of this type of story is uh is called the swan maiden motif which basically uh, goes like this a group of fairy women they they're disguised as swans and while they're disguised as swans they literally are swans you can't tell the difference and one you know some nights on moonlit nights they take off their swan clothing and they go dancing in the moonlight and a guy comes along and steals the the, the feather clothing the suit of one of them and forces her to marry him. Uh, and even if the marriage is good and she has children, if she finds her swan clothing, and she usually does, she'll fly away forever and never come back. These stories usually do not end well. Um, and it's funny because these stories are also found in other parts of the world with a different animal involved. For example, in, uh, in, uh, in Scottish areas, uh, they speak of selkies. Uh, selkies are these seals that are not really seals. If you spy on them long enough and at the right time, they take off their, you find that they're just suits of seals. And underneath the suits, there's this beautiful woman who's uh, not a mortal woman. Uh, and uh, so these stories are found in various parts of the world with different animals. Uh, um, another form of this kind of story is usually a story where somebody, uh, a spirit, a water spirit or a fairy spirit wants to marry a man because they're curious about gaining a soul. Uh, because it, it was believed that, you know, during Christian times in the Middle Ages, it was believed that pagan spirits still roam the earth and, uh, and they, may be, they may have all kinds of benefits, but they don't have a soul and therefore they can't be saved. And uh, one type of story of this type is the, the sad story of Undine. Uh, this is a full-length version given to us by, this is an English translation of a story by De La Motte Folk. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I'll have it in the description. Um, and uh, this particular story is, uh, let's see, it's, uh, yeah, it's illustrated by Arthur Rackham. And uh, there's, there's Undine. She's a water spirit. Uh, and uh, another version, which uh, everybody knows, believe it or not, you know it too, the Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. Uh, this type of story uh, of of uh, of, uh, of a spirit that marries a mortal man to gain a soul is is the is the inspiration for the Little Mermaids. And unlike the Disney movie, it has a sad ending, just like these stories do. Uh, okay, so uh, so moving uh, moving away from these stories and moving on to my third story, I want to tell the story of a person by the name of. Theophilus. Now, Theophilus was uh, a very holy man, uh, very pious, but he was the victim of slander and of things he didn't do. And he was very angry about this because I lived my life so virtuously and I'm accused of these things and I want my name cleared and there's nothing he could do. So he visits a sorcerer and the sorcerer manages to call up the devil. And he makes a deal with the devil to get to have his name cleared and get even with those who slandered him. So he makes a deal with the devil for his soul, of course, and to have to have his name cleared. And his name gets cleared, but then Theophilus, time goes by and he greatly regrets what he did. He goes, I can't believe I made a deal with the devil. I'm damned forever. This, you know, so what if my name was slandered? I was accused of doing things I didn't do. You know, having being virtuous and being right to God, you know, is the important thing. So he prays and he prays and he prays and he prays to the Virgin Mary. And it works. The Virgin Mary actually goes to the devil, grabs the the contract from the devil, tells the devil go fuck himself. She rips up the contract and 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 the and gives it to Theophilus. And Theophilus, when he wakes up one morning and he sees the contract there, and he knows that the Virgin Mary interceded for him, and his name is cleared. 
and he's not condemned. So that's the power of the Virgin Mary. Uh, very interesting story. Uh, what I really like about the story is that it seems to be, I believe the story uh, 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 comes, comes just before a more famous story that may have inspired it, the story of Faust. Uh, but the Faust story is, of course, kind of different. Faust doesn't go to a magician or a sorcerer. Faust himself is a great, is a great sorcerer, and he himself calls up the devil, or Mephistopheles, as he's called, and he makes a deal with him. And uh, the story of Faust is so celebrated. We have the version by Marlowe, the playwright. We have uh, the other play, the more famous play. Uh, he's either, Marlowe has him, uh, he's a contemporary of Shakespeare. He has him as Dr. Faustus. And uh, the, 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 the play by Goethe, he's known as Faust. Uh, so, so this is a, a type of Faust kind of story where somebody... Uh, 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 wants something, appeals to the devil, and uh, and then regrets it. And in some of these stories, it's too late. He, he's doomed. And in some of these stories, uh, or some versions of these stories, he he's he's he gets away from it, and uh, he manages to break away from the devil. Um, uh, so anyway, um, my final story is uh, is that of the uh, uh, is a is a story uh, called the dog. Gellert. Uh, this is a Welsh uh, myth, and basically it goes like this. Uh, there's this, uh, the guy who lives in the woods, and, uh, and he has a faithful dog named Gellert, and he also has a little baby. And one day, he, uh, he, uh, uh, he, uh, he goes out, and I believe he, he's going, um, I think he has to go hunting, and, uh, and he leaves the dog in charge of the baby. So then one day, he, uh, 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 he, he, he goes. He comes back from. Uh, he comes back from hunting, and and he's greeted by his uh, by his dog, uh, and the, but he sees that the dog is covered in blood. He's his mouth, his body, and he right away jumps to the conclusion that the baby, uh, I mean that the dog ki killed and ate the baby. So he immediately in, he's grief stricken and he kills the dog, but then when he goes into the hut, he sees that the baby's fine, but next to the baby is a dead wolf. And the blood, and the blood that he saw on the dog was really the blood of the wolf. The wolf came into the hut, tried to eat the baby, and the dog protected the baby by fighting and killing the wolf. You could imagine how the guy felt. So he killed the dog that saved the baby. Uh, yeah. So now that you're good and depressed, at least now you have a story that you could tell friends, friends that you think might jump to conclusions too much. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this video. Until next time.